In learning, there is precedence, in skills and professions, there is specialization. Good morning, today is Tuesday, July 23, 2024. Today in history, on this day 136 years ago, American mystery writer Raymond Chandler was born. His representative works include The Big Sleep, The High Window, and The Lady in the Lake. Chandler is the only detective novelist whose works have entered the realm of classic literature and been written into literary history. Known as the Poet Laureate of Crime Novels by the Western literary world, he elevated the literary quality of detective novels with his tough guy style. Ching Chiao, bridging the business world and delivering information to you. Welcome to today's Ching Chiao Morning News. Let's start with political updates. President Biden announces exit from presidential race. According to news from Washington, on July 21, President Biden issued a letter to Americans on social media platforms, highlighting the economic and diplomatic achievements of the United States over the past three and a half years. He announced his decision to withdraw from the 2024 presidential election and stated that in the remaining days of his term, he will focus solely on fulfilling his presidential duties and supporting Vice President Harris as the Democratic presidential candidate. This marks the first time in decades that a U.S. president has withdrawn from seeking re-election. Biden has faced increasing scrutiny since the first televised debate in June due to his poor performance, with growing calls from Democrats and voters for him to step aside. Despite previously asserting his intent to continue in the race, the mounting pressure has led to his decision. Biden was one of the youngest senators, and at 81 years old, he is also one of the oldest presidents in U.S. history. Bangladeshi government imposes curfew. Comprehensive news from Dhaka, on July 20, demonstrations in Bangladesh against the public office quota system resulted in serious casualties. The government imposed a nationwide curfew and deployed troops to maintain order. The protests, sparked by students' dissatisfaction with the restoration of the civil service quota system, which reserves some positions for veterans' relatives, have led to at least 110 deaths and thousands of injuries over five days. More than half of the fatalities were caused by police firing. Confrontations continued in Dhaka, a city of 20 million, despite the government's efforts to disrupt communication by shutting down the internet. The demonstrations present a significant challenge to Prime Minister Hasina's government, which has been in power for 15 years. In response to the crisis, Hasina has cancelled her planned visits to Spain and Brazil. Secondly, we'll bring you updates on military-related news. Israel retaliates with strike on Hodeida, Yemen. Comprehensive news from Jerusalem, on July 19, after the Iran-backed Yemeni Houthi faction attacked the central Israeli city of Tel Aviv with a drone, Israel retaliated with an airstrike on the port area of Hodeida, a Yemeni city on the Red Sea. The strike caused a massive explosion and fire, resulting in at least three deaths and 87 injuries, most of whom were port employees. This marks Israel's first attack on Yemen. Hodeida, a key port city in northwest Yemen, is controlled by the Houthi forces. Houthi spokesman Saraya condemned the attack, stating it targeted power plants and oil storage facilities, and warned that such aggression would prompt further attacks on important Israeli targets. IDF spokesman Hagari described the operation as one of the longest and most complex airstrikes by the Israeli Air Force, involving extensive planning to address various potential threats. Now, let's turn our attention to the latest economic news. Malaysia's Q2 growth expected to reach 5.8%. Comprehensive news from Kuala Lumpur. On July 19, Malaysia's National Bureau of Statistics announced that the country's economic growth for the second quarter of 2024 is forecast to reach 5.8%, surpassing market expectations. This follows a 4.2% growth in the first quarter, with the acceleration attributed to increased performance across all sectors, including services manufacturing, and agriculture. This marks Malaysia's fastest growth in the past six quarters, indicating a robust economic recovery. Specifically, Malaysia's services industry grew by 5.6% in the second quarter, 
up from 4.7% in the previous quarter, driven by gains in wholesale and retail trade, transportation and warehousing, and finance and insurance. Additionally, Malaysia's total trade saw increases, with exports in June rising by 1.7% year-on-year. Although this was below market expectations, total exports for the first half of the year rose by 3.9% compared to the same period last year. Now, here is some important safety information. Global computer connectivity issues disrupt business operations. Global Times reports that on July 19, a major outage at CrowdStrike, a U.S.-based computer security technology company, caused significant disruptions to Microsoft systems worldwide. The outage affected banks, supermarkets, telecommunications, and airport operations in Singapore, India, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. Payment systems globally were impacted, with customers unable to use Apple Pay, and Australian supermarket customers reported issues with card payments. Police systems in New South Wales were also down, limiting information dissemination, and flights across the US were grounded or cancelled, leaving passengers at Sydney Airport unable to check in their luggage. CrowdStrike, headquartered in Sunnyvale, California, provides endpoint security and threat intelligence services. Its Falcon sensor is widely used in commercial computers for security data collection. In response to the incident, CrowdStrike stated on its website, the company has received reports of Windows host crashes related to Falcon sensors, and the engineering team is actively working to resolve this issue. Newcastle virus outbreak in southern Brazil According to news from Brazil, on July 19, the Brazilian Ministry of Agriculture reported an outbreak of Newcastle virus on local poultry farms, resulting in the death of about 7,000 birds, which is half of the farm's total poultry. The affected farm is temporarily closed, and all chickens on the site will be destroyed to prevent further spread of the virus. The authorities have declared an animal health emergency in the state to control the outbreak. Newcastle virus is highly transmissible among birds and affects their respiratory, nervous, and digestive systems, but does not impact humans. Brazilian Agriculture Minister Favaro noted that the outbreak has led to a trade ban. As Brazil is the world's largest chicken exporter, supplying nearly 40% of global chicken, the suspension of exports is expected to cause significant disruptions in the chicken supply for other countries. Finally, here's some intriguing cultural news. Hong Kong hosts 34th Book Fair According to Vietnam News Agency, the 34th Hong Kong Book Fair, themed film and television literature, is being held at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center from July 17 to 23. Hosted by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, the fair has attracted participants from mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and 31 other countries and regions, including Argentina, France, South Korea, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Over 600 cultural activities are taking place simultaneously. The Consulate General of Vietnam in Hong Kong has created a film-themed space at the fair to showcase Vietnamese classic and modern literary works that have been adapted into movies or translated into various languages. The booth also features books on Vietnamese culture art, tourism, and cuisine, to promote the country's image. Lu Duc Han, Consul General of Vietnam in Hong Kong, stated that the 2024 Hong Kong Book Fair is not only a venue for exchanging and displaying works, but also an opportunity to enhance cultural exchange and promote positive values through literature and film. The presentation of Vietnamese literary works at the event highlights the significance and appeal of Vietnamese culture on the international stage, particularly in Hong Kong. Financial Newsletter According to the Wall Street Journal, Comex Gold Futures prices, after reaching a record high of $2,488 per ounce earlier this week, have since dropped to around $2,400 per ounce. That's all for today's Qingqiao Morning News. Thank you for listening.